Hi, and welcome to Bluebell Storytime Online. I'm Miss Mandy from the Comer Library. It's summertime now, you know, nice and hot, and what tastes better than a cool slice of watermelon? It's a great time to be growing these and picking these and eating them especially. And we have some great books about watermelons here. I've got a couple I want to share with you. This is called The Watermelon Seed by Greg Pizzoli. I love watermelon, chomp, chomp, chomp. It's the best. Ever since I was a teeny tiny baby crocodile, it's been my favorite, chomp, slurp, chomp. I like it for breakfast. I like it for lunch. I like a big salty slab for dinner, and I love it for dessert. I love watermelon. Gulp. You ate a big bite there. I just swallowed a seed. Oh no. I swallowed a seed. It's gonna happen. It's growing in my guts. Soon vines will come out of my ears. Goodness. My stomach will stretch. My skin will turn pink. I don't want to be in a fruit salad. Somebody please help me. Grumble, grumble, says his tummy. Oh no, I can feel it growing inside me. It's happening right now. My stomach feels funny. Burp. Oh, here's the seed. That was too close. No more melon for me. Never again. Well, maybe just a teeny tiny bite. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Oh, he looks a little worried. What do you think happened? I think maybe he ate another seed. Maybe he did. All right, thank you. All right, we just read a book about a watermelon, so I wanted you to see what a vine looks like. You're looking at a picture of a watermelon growing on a watermelon vine. You can see the vine twirls around and gets long, and there's the wa watermelon growing right on it, looking ready to be picked. Now I want us to sing a song. Pretend like you have a watermelon seed right in your hand, okay? First, you take the seed and you plant it. You plant it. Then you see a sprout and you water it. You water it. Then you see a vine and you watch it. You watch it. Then you see a watermelon and you pick it. You pick it. Then you slice it up and you eat it. You eat it. Then you take a seed and plant it and plant it and start all over again. Great, great, good job. All right, I've got another great book about watermelons I want to read to you now. Peter Spit a Seed at Sue. I think you'll like this one too. Mary Lou and I were bored, and so were Pete and Sue next door. Over they came, and we were four, four bored kids on a boring porch watching a bug crawl across the floor. Just then we heard a fella yelling. He was selling watermelon. Melons, icy cold and sweet. Melons, what a perfect treat. Just the thing four kids could use to chase away their boring blues. We chomped and slurped and gulped and burped. Then Peter spit a seed at Sue, which hit her cheek and stuck like glue. Susie spit one back at Pete, which struck and stuck right on his seat. Pete spit two at Mary Lou. How could I help but join in too? Come on, I yelled to Mary Lou. You pepper Pete, I'll splatter Sue. Then seeds were flying everywhere, zipping, zinging through the air. Seeds were plastered to our clothes. Seeds were stuck between our toes. Seeds were tangled in our hair. Seeds got down our underwear. Off we ran across the yard, spitting fast and spitting hard. The laundry fluttered in the breeze as seeds buzzed through the air like bees. 
Soon our sheets had polka dots and dad's shorts sported leopard spots. We still could hear that fella yelling, come and get your watermelon. He was in the village square. Seconds later, we were there, gobbling up a new supply. We slurped them in and let them fly. Off we swooped across the square, raining seeds down everywhere. Oops, one hit the traffic cop. We thought for sure he'd make us stop. But then he got an impish grin, grabbed a slice, and plunged right in. A camp bus rumbled up and stopped, and out of doors and windows popped 60 children shouting, Yum! Watermelon! Give us some! Before we knew it, everyone was clamoring to join the fun. Mailmen, nannies, grocery clerks, barbers, butchers, soda jerks, teachers, preachers, hard hat guys, even dudes in suits and ties. Through the thick and thin of it, we spit and spit and spit and spit. Till from a limo stepped the mayor, who fixed us with a steely stare. Enough, she boomed. Just look around. What have you done to our poor town? It was a sight, I must confess. A spitty, spotty, dotty mess. We bowed our heads and took the blame. We swore we'd never spit again and vowed to clean it up. But then a baker and his cart went by, and with a twinkle in her eye, the mayor grabbed a whipped cream pie. Gotcha, she cried, and let it fly. I wiped the cream out of my eyes and looked at her in great surprise. She laughed and picked up two more pies. Pie fight, cried Pete. Yahoo, me too. He grabbed a pie and so did Sue. Then pies were flying everywhere, zipping, zinging through the air. I turned and grinned at Mary Lou. How could we help but join in too? I think I would join in too. I bet you would. Right, I hope you enjoyed those books and I hope you get to eat some watermelon very soon. I know I've got one in my refrigerator I want to have over the weekend, maybe. All right, I found a neat little craft that I thought you might could make. It's very simple. This is just a paper plate. I colored the watermelon rind green. I used red construction paper to put in the middle, but you can certainly color it red. And I glue, I drew watermelon seeds. You can glue some. If you have real seeds, that would be fun to glue those on. If you want to add a little bit more to the craft and make it more of a game, you can match four watermelon seeds to the number four. You can make a whole set of these, just something fun to match. You can use uh, numbers and counting or put letters, things like that, anything you wanted to match. So I hope you'll have a chance to make that and share it with us and just enjoy. So thank you for joining me on Bluebell Storytime.